please rise for the posting of the colors and remain standing for the national anthem and inspiration. was written by Francis of Assisi. Even though his words were written in the early 13th century, they seem to be just as relevant to our lives today as we near the end of the 20th century. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let there be love. Where there is doubt, let there be faith. Where there is despair, let there be hope. Where there is darkness, let there be light. Where there is sadness, let there be joy. Grant that I may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. Lord, make me an instrument of our peace. Teachers and faculty, good evening and welcome to the commencement exercise for the 1995 class of Eastern Hills High School. Graduation is a goal each and every one of us has been striving to achieve for many years. And as we walk across the stage this evening, we realize the huge role our family and friends have played in helping us come to this turning point in our lives. We deeply appreciate all the love and support each of you have given us in making one of our many dreams come true. We also wish to welcome and pay tribute to the teachers and faculty members who are here, for without your dedication, support, and lessons you have taught us in and out of the classroom, we could not be here today, reaching a major milestone in our lives. 
Most of all, I would like to welcome each of the seniors sitting out there this evening. Each of us have had our own special memories of our days at Eastern Hills and special friends and bonds that will last us a lifetime. We have all worked hard for the past 12 years to be here this evening, and you certainly have earned the right to be called graduate. It's my pleasure this evening to welcome those of you that are family members and friends to this memorable occasion, 1995 graduation exercise Eastern Hills High School. On behalf of the faculty and the administration of Eastern Hills, may I offer our sincere appreciation for your presence at this evening's graduation ceremony. You know, graduation is a highlight of the year. It's actually the culmination of four years of hard work and study. Now, it's our hope and desire that each graduate is prepared to face the next step in life, whether that be higher education, the world of work, or some other personal endeavor. We hope also that the ceremony this evening will be one that is in keeping with the dignity and the time-honored spirit and propriety and tradition of graduation. At this time, I would like to introduce the people seated on the platform. I would like to ask them to please stand as, if as they are introduced. And would the audience please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Tabitha Roy, valedictorian. Charles Trotter, salutatorian. Jim Wynn, vice president, senior class. Kenny Fox, president, senior class. Allison Alexander, Secretary, Senior Class. Mrs. Christine Moss, Board of Education. Dr. J.D. Shipp, Assistant Superintendent Personnel. Ms. Diane Corman, Assistant Principal. Mr. Bobby Murray, Assistant Principal. Ms. Jerry Miller, Lead Counselor. Thank you. There's one other person I would like to recognize at this time, and that's a person who for many, many years has done an outstanding job in organizing the graduation ceremonies, getting the diplomas ready and getting everything ready for this evening and spending a lot of hard hours in doing that, and that's Ms. Margie Houlihan. And Ms. Houlihan is sitting right over here. I'd like her to stand at this time, please. Thank you very much, and we'll follow our program as printed. Good evening. As you all know, tonight is a very special night for not only the 1995 senior class of Eastern Hills High School, but also for their parents friends and family, and for all those that are close to them. Therefore, on behalf of the senior class, I would like to take a moment and pay a special tribute to all the parents. To begin, I believe the words thank you are called to order. We may not say these words enough or tell you how much we appreciate all that you've done, but we would really like for you to know now the word thanks is such a small word, but it means so much. For each letter, it represents the many things that you have done and given us. So I'd like to share with you now some of these wonderful things. T. You have been the most important and effective teachers of our lives. As parents, you have taught us your talents, secrets, and treasures of life. You have showered us with tender, loving care, and you wiped away our tears and brought us through our tough times of trials and tribulations. H. All of our lives, you have held us close to your hearts. You always hear us when we call, and you have given us hope and happiness. 
As parents, you have been hardworking and gave us a place to call home. You have always been there for us, especially over these past four hectic high school years. You have become our heroes and our hero heroines in our lives. Therefore, we do not hesitate to thank and honor you. A. All of our lives, you have aided us with problems in, in our decision making. And all the while, you supported and encouraged us in what we chose to do. You allowed us to be who we are and you accepted us. We appreciate all that you have done for us. N. You nurtured and nourished us into the mature young adults that we are. You provided for our needs and necessities. We could always count on you to be there to calm us when we were nervous, nag us when it was needed, and to discipline us when we were naughty. We always managed to negotiate our differences, and you never gave us any negativity. And you also never neglected us or let us down. Okay, we kindled all of your hugs and kisses which became keepsakes in our lives. Your keen eyes have kept us from harm and your kindness is always appreciated. The knowledge that you gave will be taken and put to use in the future. Us, you showed us the path of life and you taught us to share and to be sincere. These are just a few words expressing our gratitude to you. However, these words aren't nearly enough. Once again, we thank you for all that you have done for us. And the only way that we know how to repay you is by giving you our love and respect.
Mr. Largent, Dr. Shipp, members on the platform, parents, grandparents, friends, and especially to our 1994-95 graduating class of Eastern Hills High School. It is indeed an honor for me to be asked to participate in your graduating, your graduation exercises. I am delighted to participate. I'm delighted to bring greetings to you on behalf of the Fort Worth Independent School District Board of Education. Well, the time that you have anticipated is here. Now, you and your past, whatever it was, you made it. You and your present, whatever it is, you are making it. You and your future, whatever it will be, you will make it. It will be your choice. You see, life can be no better to you than you make it. If you want to get somewhere in life, there has to be a beginning and a direction. The beginning is where you are right now. And the direction is where you plan to be in the future. So as you move toward being a success, remember these five steps. First, you must have a vision. Be able to see change. Second, as you see the change, act immediately upon change. Third, you must be able to communicate. Communication is an important component of being successful. Fourth, have a sense of humor. Be able to laugh at yourself. Fifth, develop integrity as you go along the way. This will help you through the future. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. As we stand boldly on the horizon facing a bright new day, we are faced with problems almost insurmountable. A terror lurks in the hearts of mankind. A terror for what we become. A society so prone to violent acts, crime of, crimes of rage and hatred, and prejudice towards our brother man, that they are routine to us as life itself. We offer up an outcry of despair, praying someone will see our agony and come to deliver us out of this land of sorrow. We have fallen into the dark abyss of our sin. The downfalls of our tortured past begrudge the meaningless victories from this strife. What we procure as a species in our senseless acts of self-worth, we manifest through blatant disregard to the condemning consequences, relentless in their pursuit to devour us. No remorse, no second thoughts, never wishing to turn back the cruel, unrelenting hands of time. What have we become? Have we become so callous, so cold and embittered that we care not for what remains at the end of the day? Our lives, our souls remain in jeopardy each day we let pass and say nothing to end this wrong. This is a view that many people hold in today's society. A cold, bleak world lost, lost prone to wonder the darkest nights. But as I look out the audience, and to you graduating class in 1995, I know this is not the case. We are the hope for a bright new world. We are standing at a crossroads. The time is at hand. Do we, the class of 1995, continue to remain silent, ignoring the injustice? Should the cries of the world, seemingly full of pain, fall silent on our ears? Would we take a stand? Stand firm in the belief that all men are created equal. Take up the fight for those two broken by life to defend themselves. Be a beacon of hope in this world all consumed by the midnight of our souls. For years now we've looked subservient to the words of others. It is now time to show our parents and teachers their works of love were not in vain. As we venture forth into this great unknown, don't ever allow life to let you become discouraged. Just recall the times you have spent here at Eastern Hills and take, and take comfort in the memory of a friend. Although fate may never allow some of our paths to cross again, cherish the fact they were able to cross at least once 
when we experience unending joys because of it. We can always find solace in tomorrow, but we must not allow ourselves to live in the past. We must press on to bigger and better things, the things we've been preparing for for the past 13 years. We are ready. Go out and make Eastern Hills High School proud. address, I want to give thanks to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for all of the blessings he has bestowed upon me. To all of the fourth ISD administrators, to the parents and families of the graduates, and all of those persons who were instrumental in making this day become a reality. And special recognition to the graduating seniors of 1995. Yesterday is a word that we seem to be afraid of because yesterdays come and go way too fast. The days when we were in elementary school, middle school, and even our four-year adventure throughout high school together have become memories of yesterday. Because we are only human, we cannot refrain from wondering why time passes by so fast. It seems as if we, if we were just catching on to the world of high school, and now we must enter a new and different world very different from the one we saw when our educational process began. This evening represents the ending of, for most of us, 12 years of an educational journey. What we need to realize is that this special occasion marks the very beginning of a new and very important segment of our lives. We must collect our yesterdays today and create new and even better yesterdays for a new tomorrow. Fellow graduates of the class of 1995, we have opened the door to a new tomorrow by enhancing our knowledge and persevering through years of education. Society have give, has given us time to prepare ourselves for whatever task we are willing to pursue, whatever vocation we want to partake. In other words, we have taken in from society and now, as graduates, we must think about our future position in the community. How will you contribute to make society a better place? In a much broader, broader view, what can you give to make this world a much better place? Regardless of the statistics of our society and country, there is hope, even though it is even often clouded by negativism. Today, I challenge you to value and emphasize the importance of our community. Persevere in the process to achieve your goals and achieve what is needed for your country and world. As I read through an edition of the world's great classics, I discovered an inspiring poem. It is entitled, The River of Life, written by Thomas Campbell. The River of Life. The more we live, more brief appear our life's succeeding stages. A day to childhood seems a year, and years like passing ages. The gladsome current of our youth, air of passion yet disorders, steals lingering like a river smooth along its grassy borders. But as the careworn cheek grows wan and sorrow shafts fly thicker, ye stars that measure life to man, why seem your courses quicker? When joys have lost their bloom and breath, and life itself is vapid, why, as we reach the falls of death, feel we its tide more rapid? It may be strange, yet who would change time's course to slower speeding, when one by one our friends have gone and left our bosoms bleeding? Heaven gives our years of fading strength and dignifying fleetness, and those of you a seemingly proportion to their sweetness. The time has come for us to sail the river of life. Some days may be sunny and some days may be rough as we sail this river of life. But as my brother always tells me, we must not view our bad situations as stumbling blocks, but value them as stepping stones. In other words, we must roll with the punches and learn from them. We must hold on to our beliefs and hold on to the compass who sits high and looks down low. Class of 1995, we hold the future in our hands. Today is our day, and tomorrow is the beginning of a whole new world. I challenge you to sail this river of life, and along the way, return to others the help and guidance that has been stored within you. So, 
children of tomorrow, reach for those so-called unreachable stars and achieve and grasp the joy of success. On behalf of the administrative staff of the Fort Worth Independent School District, our superintendent, Dr. Thomas Toko, it is my privilege to extend our congratulations to each graduate of the Eastern Hills Class of 1995 and also to those parents who are out there can sigh a collective uh, sigh of relief that they have now made it. This is truly a milestone, graduates, in your life, and we celebrate with you and we wish you much success as you go out into a new future. Now, it is my pleasure to recognize the valedictorian of the of the class of 1995 and present her with a scholarship from the state of Texas. This scholarship is good for one year to any state college or university and is given annually to the highest ranking graduate. The 1995 valedictorian is Tabitha Lou Roy. Tabitha is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Willie F. Roy. Tabitha plans to attend Sam Houston State University in Huntsville, Texas, where she will major in elementary education, hoping to become a teacher and eventually an elementary school principal. While at Eastern Hills, she has been very busy. She has participated in many activities and received a number of honors. Let me just share some of these with you. She has been a Tandy Scholar for the past five years. She's also a Tandy Technology Scholar Award winner, member of the National Honor Society, member of the Society of Academic Excellence, recipient of the Anne Brennan Academic Achievement Award in Music and Science, recipient of the University of Interscholastic League Award, selected for Who's Who in Science, drum major of the marching band, class president, class favorite, homecoming queen, Miss Eastern Hills High School, Miss Big E, State Finalist for Optimus Club's Leadership Scholarship, Dallas Morning News Outstanding Student in Computer Science, Class Acts Talent Show winner, voted Best All-Around Senior Girl. And after all of that, she still has time to sing, to play her French horn, to listen to gospel music, and to be active in our church. Tabitha, it's my pleasure to present this scholarship to you at this time. While Tabitha is standing here, I would like to have Mr. and Ms. Willie F. Roy Sr. and their family please stand. Our congratulations to you. Now we want to recognize the salutatorian. The salutatorian is the second highest ranking student in the senior class. Our salutatorian is Charles Edward Trotter. <laughs> Charles is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Jerry Trotter and he plans to attend Texas Wesleyan University here in our city. He will major in pre-med and hopes to become an anesthesiologist. While at Eastern Hills, Charles also has been busy. He has participated in a number of activities and like Tabitha has received a number of honors. Among these are a member of the National Honor Society, Tandy Scholar for the past four years, Tandy Technology Scholar Award winner, recipient of the Ann Brennan Achievement Award, recipient of an academic letter sweater, selected by the Dallas Morning News as an outstanding math student, member of the Society of Academic Excellence, member of the Student Council, head squad leader of the marching band, a natural helper, JC Youth Salute semifinalist, participant of the University of Interscholastic League one-act play, a member of the All-City Symphonic Band, a member of the All-Region Symphonic Band, and a representative of the Whiz Quiz team of Eastern Hills High School. In addition to that, he still has time for his hobbies, which are art, music, travel, and drama. Charles, it's my pleasure to present this award to you at this time. <laughs> Mr. 
Stafford, Mrs. Jerry Trotter, and family, will you please stand? Our congratulations to you. It's my privilege to recognize four groups of students for their academic and community achievements. The first group of honor graduates has a grade point average of at least four point with no semester grade below 70 and an E average in citizenship with no grade below N. These students are graduating summa cum laude. Would these students and their parents please rise? Oops, two. Summa cum laude, please rise. And the parents. The second group of honor graduates has a grade point average of 3.6 to 3.9 with no semester grade below 70 and an E average in citizenship with no grade below N. These students are graduating magna cum laude. Would these students and their parents please rise? The third group of honor graduates has a grade point average of 3.3 to 3.59 with no semester grade below 70 and an E average in citizenship with no grade below N. These students are graduating cum laude. Would these students and their parents please rise? Thank y'all. 1995 marks the the second year for a new recognition and program at Eastern Hills High School. These graduates completing a specified number of hours of community service are being recognized for their contributions to the community. This year's senior class is the first in which these graduates who completed 60 hours or more of community service are being recognized. Would these students and their parents please rise? 